Nox Amanda is freeze and Solecito Rafael as well. Please. Silence, please. Silence. What a process. It seems to get her from jail to Seattle uh, mm -hmm. for steps on the, on, the, on the ground. The logistics. Can you talk to us about uh, what troubles you, you encountered and, and how the process worked? That there were a lot of committed people, very professional people. Uh, a lot of advanced planning took place. Um, a great deal of credit has to go to her Italian lawyers, Carla Della Vadova as well as Maria Del Grosso and Luciana Gerga, who were extremely competent and, and played a critical role in not only achieving the result, but uh, as well as ensuring that she was able to leave. And it all worked quite well. There was a lot of support there. Uh, there was manpower and um, a lot of help from a lot of people. I guess someday the details of that will be fully revealed. Um, we all should, should, should pay special credit to British Airways, who were very accommodating and helpful, both from a protective and security way, as well as making it possible for David Marriott, um, their press relations person, and myself to meet with the family and to meet with Amanda privately when she deplaned and outside the presence of anyone other than her family, so we could explain to her what was occurring outside, how many cameramen were there, how many reporters were there, how many photographers were there, so she could make her own decision about whether or not she wanted to speak to the media. Did she, did she have a sense of what was waiting for her through those doors? We clearly explained it to her, and she's a very bright young woman, so she fully understood. And I guess what I should say, and it might be very meaningful to your Seattle um, audience, is that um, she wasn't sitting with Kurt, her father, uh, during the flight, and when they um, deplaned, um, after I would say, um, I said a big hello to her, and I got a very warm embrace from her, which was very nice, um, then she uh, met up with everybody else, and um, for whatever reason, uh, Kurt and Amanda had a very, very emotional moment. Uh, their embrace lasted for longer than I can count. Um, she was really shaken, um, very emotional, uh, and she was crying. Well, tears of joy, um, but because it was so um, significant in my own mind, without expressing it, uh, I really th thought it was in doubt whether or not she would speak. And we didn't have a position one way or another. This was going to be purely and exclusively Amanda's choice when she had the information. But when the question came up after she composed herself after you know she relaxed and 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 uh, after that emotional moment with her dad uh, and it was explained that um, what was going on outside that David Marriott would make some introductory remarks and I would say a few things and if Kurt and Edda wanted to speak and then it would be up to Amanda and so when the question was put to her she without hesitation she made it very clear to all of us that she wanted to speak and she wanted to express okay. her heartfelt right. thanks and appreciation to this community and to so many people around the world that not only supported her and recognized her innocence but supported her family who was then in a position to support her. They're reminding me to speak in English because um, I'm having problems with that. Um, I'm, I'm really overwhelmed right now. Um, I was looking down from the airplane and it seemed like everything wasn't real. Um, what's important for me to say is just thank you to everyone who's believed in me, who's defended me, who's supported my family. Um, I just want my family is the most important thing to me right now, and I just want to go and be with them. So thank you for being there for me. How is she doing right now? What did she do last night? 
Um, we left the airport um, uh, and traveled to a, a, a location that was filled, overflowing, with longtime friends and family members. And it's just as she said, it was important for her to spend meaningful time with her family. It was less about Amanda and it was much more about everybody else. They wanted to embrace her. There certainly was joy. But I want to be really clear. This was not a celebration. It was really a moment of thankfulness, appreciation, and gratefulness. And that's what was going on. I mean, you can really see, once you see how Amanda interacts with her family, when you see how Amanda intera interacts, you know, with, you know, five-year-old twins, you can see what a sweet, um, sensitive, caring, compassionate person she is. She's certainly youthful, she's joyful, but I also want you to know she's extremely thoughtful and she fully understands what is going on. We're, we're all very happy that she presents as healthy as she is. And I think a large part of that should be given credit to her family and her wider family support. And what I mean by that is, as you probably know, Amanda was able to call her family once a week. And that continuity, remaining in communication with her family, I think was very important. But even more important, this family has demonstrated a steadfast devotion that is unparalleled probably in the history of helping another family member. You know, they always had somebody in Italy from the very beginning until the very end. That was four years, and this was a difficult process. By, by, by having a loved one in Italy who could maintain contact and visit Amanda, I think she understood she was fully supported, she was not abandoned, and no one even remotely thought they would ever leave without her.